speaker is what I like to call an IT guru. He has 24 years of consulting and training experience. He is a Microsoft Certified Systems Engineer, a Certified Technical Trainer, as well as President of Ad Access Technology in Please join me as I welcome our chapter's favorite IT guy, Matthew Baker, and a gentleman that I am very blessed to also call friend, Mr. Matthew Baker. But there's so much more to Office. Office can do so much today, and Microsoft is going in some really radically new and different directions with Office as we know it. So I'm here to kind of introduce you to some of those new features and some sideline features that you can use in conjunction with your existing Office and with these new Office features that we have available today. Um, so I'm just going to kind of say and set this up is that we're always going to learn some new things about Microsoft and, and Office about all their different offerings. And we'll use it to obviously help our life, to help organize all of our information we use at work and home and at school, increase our productivity, and most important of all, make sure that we can kind of raise our deep credit level um, <laughs> up to that next level. So, um, <laughs> I don't know what it is, every time I get invited back, we want to talk about Office all the time. So, I've, I've offered to do uh, Windows 7, to just keep it off in no, step six. No, 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 we want Office. Okay, okay sure, <laughs> whatever you want me to do. So we know we know Office. We know Office in the conventional sense. On the desktop is a whole suite of programs, and I you know uh, will say that you have all those nice, pretty icons that represent all the different uh, programs in the Office suite. Uh, I was thinking about challenging you to uh, identify each one of those icons and tell me what each one is. Oh, <laughs> she's a plant. Can you do it? Yes. Can you? Try it. Access, OneNote, InfoPath, Word, Video, Publisher, Excel, Projects, Outlook, SharePoint, and PowerPoint. Holy cow, you did great. Woo! Uh, you win a prize. <laughs> the thing about desktop is that, so yeah, you can edit these files anywhere there's a computer and anywhere there's an internet connection. So no software installed, just you know, use a supported browser, and you're good to go. So what does the Word web app look like? Uh, looks like Word. Uh, it's not as, how do you want to say, uh, fully featured as the desktop version. Uh, but it doesn't need to be. It gets what you need uh, uh, available to you on your desktop. Um, although I do expect the convergence of the feature set for the desktop version as what you'll see in the online version. Uh, so that's only a matter of time. But what you'll find is that you have all the common features, and it's not what I would call your grandmother's word pad uh, that you would use in um, Windows to kind of do a quick and dirty document. This goes way beyond this and gets you everything you need to be able to do your documents and edit them and get your spell checked out right here and do the emailing uh, from the application and whatnot. <laughs> all right. Requires no software to install, just sign up, use a standard browser, and you can upload. And what's neat is you can actually drop and drag from your Windows Explorer into the browser's window and vice versa. It has that capability because uh, SkyDrive is written using HTML5, which is the new uh, HTML standards that extend what can be done with web-based applications. Uh, I don't know if you've all heard of uh, Adobe Flash. Uh, Adobe Flash, you know, a lot of people do the animations. Well, actually, HTML5 is not proprietary, so HTML5 is expected to take over a lot of functions and features of Adobe Flash. So it's kind of interesting. When you see uh, or hear that an application is HTML5 compliant, you know they're, they're ahead of the game. Uh, and SkyDrive is one of those applications. Now, here's the good news for the two step things. For established SkyDrive users before April 22nd, 2012, check your SkyDrive account, log in, and you'll see that uh, for your loyalty, Microsoft will uh, upgrade your account free to 25 gigabytes of free storage. Yay! Stephanie? So you can go and see that you have your 7 gigs to start with. Then you can click on the free upgrade link. And then you get the uh, message that your account has been upgraded to 25 gigs. So that's awesome. And then you buy 
five and seven gigabytes for both services is only a starting point. I think eventually it's going to go higher and higher as the as the competition increases. All right. So there's also a SkyDrive client that you can install on your PC. It's not necessary 100%, but it does help increase the utilization of how handy it is to use the SkyDrive. And what it does is allows you to access your SkyDrive files using seamless integration with Windows. So what it does, it appears as a folder in your Windows Explorer. Works just like any other folder on your PC, except it's not on your local PC, it's actually you know, out there in the cloud. So you'll see here that there's a SkyDrive folder in my list in my Windows Explorer, and I have all my files that are located on SkyDrive uh, right there ready for me to use as if they are locally stored on my PC. That's seamless integration. That works really well. And that's one reason why installing the SkyDrive client gives you that extra measure of integration and ease of use. Base, is there a backup somewhere? Like where you can it'll automatically back up document if the internet should crash? Being that it's cloud-based, it's backed up just by the topology and the implementation of the uh, service itself. Because all the files are spread throughout multiple systems throughout the, uh, the internet, and of course those systems are backed up by other multiple systems. So one system goes down, it's just no worry because your file is actually stored on five other, or who knows how many other uh, computers. Uh, same way Google does it, you know, when they have a bunch of systems go to, see, I almost did it. Uh, as, as soon as uh, you know, a system goes down, uh, they will actually uh, use their uh, cloud-based services to provide that redundancy. That's what you'll find out there. There's also other applications you can use in conjunction with SkyDrive. Uh, a couple I'll point out would be the browser for SkyDrive. This is the uh, component I was talking about that provides partial functionality on the Android platform. And, of course, you have one more. So, in the last presentation we had, uh, a few weeks ago, we were showing you how to use OneNote and be able to store those notes on SkyDrive and make those notes available anywhere. Now, here's where another part of the game changes for everyone, uh, and for Microsoft especially, and um, it's something called Office 365. 365 is amazing. It is not necessarily Office. It is a suite of hosted services from Microsoft that in addition to including the Microsoft Office web apps also includes email, uh, SharePoint, a hosted website for your external customers, uh, and uh, also voicemail, video conferencing, uh, and all these different features. Uh, depending on what level of service you're actually wanting to get, you can actually uh, have Office 365 potentially replace your company's PBX. So uh, we'll take a look at the different levels of offerings they have. Um, the uh, web apps are one thing, so you can certainly use those. Uh, and that is included in the Office 365 service, as well as the regular version of Office Desktop. So if you go and subscribe to the Office 365 service and get their higher level of offerings, you actually get both. So you can get the hosted web apps service, but you also have the desktop version because you may want to have that installed on your computers at work so you get the full experience. But when you're traveling, you may want to have a lighter experience and don't need the full uh, uh, install, and you're going to use the web apps when you travel. And it's just much, much more. <laughs> Many of the features that can be standard would be the cloud-based email service that comes with the Office 365 service. Basic services, if you subscribe to the later services that are offered, uh, called the E3 and E4 plans, you get a whole more uh, uh, with it. So this is going to be uh, hosted voicemail support with auto attendant capabilities. So you have that, uh, you know, press 1 to go here, press 3 to go there. Uh, you also have the advanced email storage and archiving. A lot of businesses have requirements because of federal regulations to archive mail. Uh, so in case that's needed, that's also supported. And licenses for each user 
for the desktop version of Office. And again, this is for the higher levels of those plans, but that is a really nice feature. And not only is each user uh, potentially licensed for the desktop version, but that user can then take that license and install Office on up to five different computers. Concurrently. Oh, per user. Per user. Oh, okay. That's, that's a lot of flexibility. Is yeah. when you buy your normal uh, office uh, on the desktop, you're typically licensed for only one machine and a supported browser, whether it's going to be Internet Explorer 7, 8, or 9, or uh, the latest version of Firefox, or the latest version of Chrome, whatever is your favorite browser, uh, Office 365 is certified to run on these browsers. So it's a good thing. Microsoft is not you know, saying, oh, well, if you're going to use our Office 365, you have to use our Internet Explorer. Don't you hate that? Mm -hmm. So you're not going to get that here. Because again, Microsoft is, is using the new standards-based programming of HTML5. So the HTML5 is supported now on uh, all these latest uh, browsers. So compatibility. Will Office 365 web apps work with Office 2007 and 2010? Uh, so the answer is yes. And files can be opened from Office 365 web apps even if they were created from Office 2007 or 2010 and vice versa. In addition to that, Office web app users can simultaneously edit a document with Office desktop users. Now, what does that mean? Now, that's interesting. So, you can have somebody who's using, um, let's say, the Word web app, go to the SkyDrive, open up a file, have somebody who's on another computer who has Word desktop open up the same file. Uh, the first person to save the file uh, is the one who who um, who initiates it, but the second person who saves the file will then be queried. Uh, do you want to um, either overwrite the changes that this person made and actually tells them who the person is who made the changes before them? Uh, and if they do want to overwrite, which one of the changes do they want to keep? You know, I would just be able to click right on the presentation. And that's coming right off the SkyDrive. And of course, that's a PowerPoint uh, you know, file that's going to load it right into the uh, SkyDrive uh, PowerPoint uh, application. And right, what it's going to do here is going to assume that I want to present the presentation. So it's coming up just like your regular full version of PowerPoint. However, if I wanted to edit it and get into editing, I would click on Edit in Browser. And that turns on the editing mode. And then I go ahead and uh, edit each slide as you would normally in a PowerPoint application. So as that loads, uh, I would get the uh, thumbnails that you would expect in PowerPoint. And of course, then I'd be able to uh, click on the items and actually edit, the, edit that if I need to. So just click on it, edit it, and you're, you're good to go. Are the features limited as far as what you can do as far as editing? Because it looks like the ribbon's not quite... Yeah, the features are not what you find in the full version okay. of PowerPoint, but they'll be enough for you to get the job done. Yeah. In fact, they'll probably go a little bit beyond what you need for doing the job. Uh, and again, this is you want to think of this as their uh, first implementation of the web apps. And one thing that Microsoft wanted to do is they wanted to have the same experience that you have with the full version. Uh, but without necessarily all the features. So they wanted to get all those features that 90% of the people use, uh, you know, in, in that case. Ring and, and the, the, the email and everything else. Uh, if you want to use the link services, which is the, um, the chatting, the video conferencing, uh, and also the uh, voicemail. So that uh, is basically going to uh, be prompted to, to walk you through making those choices. Then after that, you have the ability to actually add 25 users to the setup. And uh, you then choose what features those users can use. You can tell, uh, tell uh, Office 365, I want to give them the ability to use all those features, or I want them to only be able to use email. And it's up to you. So there's a wide variety of charges that Microsoft has, depending on what you're looking for. And it's going to be as low as $4 a month per user for just your email. Uh, you also have the capability of having a little bit more for $6 a month uh, for your small businesses. Uh, in that case, you have the ability to do uh, most of the common features that you can.
for the larger businesses, for the mid-size and enterprises, uh, you get into higher charges. And one of the things I want to profile is these two services called E3 and E4, 20 and $22 per user per month. Notice that this one has the desktop version included of Office. So you still get the full benefit of Office at your desktop. And again, think about how much you're paying for the regular version of Office, two to three hundred dollars. So for twenty dollars a month and being able to use the features of Office 365, in addition to get the desktop version of Office with that, and the ability of actually installing up to five devices per that one user, there's a lot of visual flexibility with that. Uh, so these E3 and E4 uh, services have those uh, available to you. The differentiating between the E3 and E4 is that the E4 has the capability to actually replace your PBX, your internal phone system, for your company for you know just two dollars more per user. Uh, so it's uh, very affordable compared to buying the full version of uh, Office Desktop for all of your users at uh, two to three hundred dollars a pop. So, need more information, you know who to call. Okay. <laughs> well, I'm always available to answer your questions, either here or uh, just uh, take one of my cards or my uh, bookmarks or pens that I've been passing out today. Uh, we'll help you uh, go in the right direction to make the right choices for the services that you need. Uh, office uh, 365 can, you know, suit the, the small home. Uh, office or for uh, the school use, but also it can scale up to 50,000 users for your large enterprise organizations. Uh, and uh, one of the things I kind of want to put out there is if you do, do to decide to subscribe to Office 365, we would like to be your partner. So if you would like us to help you with that, please give us a call and we certainly will be able to do that for you. Uh, but we also want you to make sure that you make the right choices uh, when you sign up. We'd hate you to subscribe to a service that, you know, is probably more than you need or less than you need. We want to make sure it's right size. Um, the other thing is our website. Um, we're going to put this presentation on our website in the papers and presentation section. Uh, so if you want to see this presentation or show it to somebody else, you're more than welcome to download it. Um, it's going to be available. In fact, that's already available. I uploaded it last night. So we're going to have not only this presentation, but also we're going to have papers and presentations available that will be actually very helpful information about how to utilize IT effectively. Uh, so it'll be information that you, you actually will be able to use. Um, we also have a Facebook page. Just look for us in the search bar on the Facebook page uh, for Ad Astro Technology. And uh, if you get a chance, go ahead and like us. What we'll do is on our Facebook page, we're going to put postings in there relating to daily use of IT, helpful tips, uh, and also anytime we put a new uh, paper or presentation on our website, we'll post that also uh, in our Facebook page. So get a chance, uh, look for us on Facebook and like us.